Okay, we are back for part three of season three with Trisha. And uh, yeah, I mean, so far it's been quite awesome, actually. I'm having a great time. So uh, for this last part uh, for today, uh, we mentioned the Girls Club, right? And um, it's sort of something that you do that I find it's pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. First of all, what is it and how did it all start? And why is it in the Lower East Side? <laughs> <laughs> because um, there are there are not enough services in the Lower East Side, awesome. and that and that is simply why. Um, I like I previously said I moved here June of um, two thousand and one. Um, I quit my I quit the restaurants. I took I you know I made sure the restaurants were okay. Left Atlanta, moved to New York. Um, and spent the summer here before my yoga training started in the winter. And so I lived in the East Village on 10th and 3rd. Um, my rent was like $300. I think I'm one of the only people <laughs> to move to New York and have their rent be cheaper than where they used to be. Um, but it also was in a uh, studio that was like 10 by 12. I'm not quite sure. It was one of those definitely New York stories where you can be on the toilet and cook your eggs at the same time, but there was no eggs cooking because your books were on the stove because there was no gas and you had no place to put your books. So <laughs> so it was very close cor uh, corners for me. Um, but so I just uh, – so I'd spent very little time in my apartment. Um, so I just walked around the city the entire time getting to know the city. Um, putting my feet on the ground. And um, when I walked by the Lower East Side Girls Club, which at that point, it was like at first and first. Um, and they had um, – and so I just walked around looking for something to do before my training started. Um, I had gone to a yoga studio, like a Bikram yoga studio, and asked to see if I, there was anything I could do before training. There wasn't much to do. So I said, all right, I'll go find something else. And um, so I just stumbled upon the Lower East Side Girls Club, and I was like, oh, what's this club with girls? Mm -hmm. And um, and so I walked in and um, immediately um, met Jenny, who grew up in the girls' club, and um, Lynn Pentecost, who is the founder. And talk about stories. Um, you know, Lynn Pentecost is probably your, um, you know, your your atypical person who lives in the East Village. She was white and had a husband and had two boys. And um, here's how my version of the story goes. And um, next to her was someone who was very typical of the Lower East Side or East Village, um, a woman of color who um, with some girls with no husband. And she was very confused that Lynn and her husband could go to work and drop their boys off somewhere for free where she was a single person and had no place for free to drop her daughter off. She didn't know how she could articulate this unfairness. And so she talked to Lynn, her neighbor, and Lynn said, I'll take your girls to the club next day. So Lynn took the girls to the boys' club the next day, and the boys' club basically said, fuck you. And Lynn said, no, fuck you. And um, so if you do not know, um, New York City, for whatever reason, was grandfather claused in that they only had boys' clubs. Everywhere else in the um, United States, there's boys' and girls' club. New York chose to um, keep that grandfather claused in, so there was no space for girls. And so Lynn turned around and said, got angry for a moment and said, all right, I have no choice. And so she started creating the girls' club, and they started out of a shopping cart and literally would just push their resources that filled up a shopping cart to places on first and first and churches. Um, no matter how you think about it, whether you like the coffee or not or anything, I will have yeah. such a heart for the Starbucks company, and I will not dig in to see who's behind it or what's going on because they let the girls' club be there at one point. Um, the girls' club just moved anywhere they could, and um, – when I was there, when I first uh, started talking to them, they were in first and first, and they're like, and I was talking about where I come from, about the restaurants, and um, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, let's bake cookies, and I'm like, I'm not baking cookies, but I will teach your girls how to build a cafe, and and create that, and that relationship really started to just um, sprout. Um, I mean, everyone likes cookies, but let's build a business out of it, yeah. and. Um, and what the girls club um, created for that was, you know, they have a cafe, they, you know, and part of those girls like bring in most of the money for their family. Um, 
don't quote anything I say, but that's pretty much, you know, how it goes down. Um, and that to me, um, I just got right back into it and it felt like Atlanta and it was Lower East Side, East Village. And I just started getting, um, you know, more and more immersed with um, what was going on in um, in my neighborhood. Um, New York was so different, you know. Um, People who lived right next to each other in apartments, you know, their kids would go to different schools and like and different and just like it was the rules were so different in New York than in Atlanta. But again, it was kind of the same. Um, so um, after that, um, when I came back from from yoga training and um, you know did my deal, like spent some time, you know, managing someone else, and then you know it didn't take me long. Two thousand and four, I opened up the studio on the Lower East Side. Um, and that is when I very quickly created something called Night Sweats, like I talked earlier about. And Night Sweats was just a dance party that I wanted everyone to be accessible, to come to, to dance, to be free without having to go to a bar or pay a huge cover pe- uh, or even have like alcohol be involved with it. I mm-hmm. um, wanted it to be a safe, different kind of a party for anyone who would want to come in. And we just started giving – and I just started giving the money to the girls' club um, – I think that's the way I kind of it consciously or how I went around the the rigid rules of Bikram yoga um, <laughs> and didn't want to use the dialogue and wanted to kind of meet each other in a different way. And for us to feel words rather than just talk about them, I think sometimes words get very immune and people, like I said earlier, play around with words and there's never really a clear translation yeah. sometimes unless you put your body and your your – your body, your mind, and your heart involved into it, then it becomes more holistic um, yeah. and more palatable. And it seemed like in that kind of um, anarchic anarchist <laughs> move, that anarchist yoga move, that you you also connected your yoga business with um, service work. I mean, that was definitely my point Um, in the restaurant business also, the community. Um, When I did go to college, you know, I studied um, social work and psychology. And I worked in domestic violence when I first got into Atlanta and I just got – I didn't feel like I was making an impact. I felt like I had put myself at risk once again um, in that position, in that – in those – in that role. Um, and so um, I just really wanted to – I found – like I found my way, like my psychology, my social work um, to empower people not only mentally but physically and emotionally and – but by moving and working with each other rather than talk therapy. No, um, mm-hmm. no, uh, no, no negative on that. Just it wasn't – it didn't work for me. And so I wanted to um, – not really do therapy, but create dreams instead. Um, Because I thought therapy was for problems. And I didn't want to necessarily talk about problems. I wanted to work with dreams instead. And so that's where I found my, quote, psychology, my social work, my service. Um, and And I finally felt like I fit in and fit into a spot that... Everyone looked different and everyone acted different, but we all kind of thought – wanted the same thing and that was freedom for what we wanted and um, and the accessibility to do that. And um, so I just kept giving money to the, to the girls' club because I was like, this is the best place ever I've ever – I couldn't even imagine this. Um, and I spent, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, and they came to me, they wanted me to be on the board as a member. And I'm like, I don't want to be on the board. I don't want to be a member. I just want to keep giving money. I just want to keep supporting. And they're like, and then again, I felt like I, quote, had no choice. Um, <laughs> and then it was getting super exciting because they were moving from first and first to Avenue D between seventh and eighth. And where the fundraising really kicked in, um, and they, we eventually, they eventually bought um, the land. We own the land. It's like thirty thousand square feet. It's like a twenty-five million dollar project um, that we ha- own. Space that the girls now call their own. Um, it's a community center. Um, again, I think um, you know mindfulness to me and to everyone to me just means someone is paying attention. Yeah. 
if someone is paying attention to you and you feel that, then you feel like the world can can support you. Um, you know, I've done fun, you know, I was grateful enough to um, do the Somali Mom Yoga Freedom Project where, you know, the project is working for women trafficking. And if, you know, that I can't think of anything le- less hope than for your life or for what the world has given you, that if you are being trafficked. Um, and so I was just like, I have got to figure out how to get out of my own way and just keep going and move in this for a different a different thing and something that's bigger than me. Um, and not to stop traffic, but um, but get the shot, like just shock it up. Yeah, I mean, it seems like you've actually kind of had some success, even though, even though it's been so intimidating, you know, even though systemic injustice is so intimidating, you do have a lot of momentum and and I've seen a lot of, um, you know, in what you've shared with us, a lot of the ways that your personal experience in yoga has, it's it, there are obstacles that you've turned into um, ability to transform other people's lives. Well, I may, I mean, I may have done it because of them, but it's really for me. <laughs> I mean, then that's, I think that's, um, it's just, it's funny. I mean, you know, you say it, but it's like, well, you're just a different version of me. You know, I'm, and I'm just a different version of Giuseppe and Giuseppe's just a different version of you. And that's, I think I, I, that's what I've learned in yoga is that I'm just talking to myself most of the time. Yeah, I used to I used to say like um cuz I used to be I'm the only person who gets to talk in the room. I'm like I have no idea what I'm thinking until I hear myself talk out loud. Mm-hmm. And um that's kind of like how this podcast has gone. But, um, <laughs> yeah. But um but it is um if I, you know, there is no credit. I I don't I don't but if if I know that I can be a piece of the Lower East Side Girls Club where now we own we own property. Um, Bloomberg put apartments on top of it, and because we we now have you know again the redlining um, affordable housing mm-hmm. in the Lower East Side. Um, we have a planetarium in there. We have um, we are teaching girls how to code and bring down satellites and come down to the planetarium, and then wow. we have a show that's like amazing. Um, it's not a place that you just go to have protection from the outside elements. Um, you go there to empower your tools yeah. and to create careers. And, um, you know, we've got celebrities on the board and not only because they have what we need, but because some of them grew up in the Lower East Side. And, and you know, Rosario Dawson says it better than anybody. She, um, she didn't escape where she was from. A lot of times you hear people in underserved neighborhoods, oh, they escaped. She, you know, she um, she has said she has created her, her, quote, life and fortune because of the Lower East Side, because she did not escape and because she's back in there and um, working for what, who, for what created who she is. And, um, and that is the Girls Club. I mean, we serve... You know, 200 girls, healthy, organic, vegetarian food. Um, you know, they come in uh, after school sometimes for their only meal that day. Um, and those girls know exactly what they have in front of them. Um, a lot of times, for me even, I choose like, oh, I can't be happy until my kid gets into school. Or I can't be, I can't feel good unless uh, this is done or that is done. Um these girls, as soon as the building was starting to create construction, mm-hmm. they got excited. Um, and a lot of these girls that grew up in the girls' club necessarily didn't have the big one. Right. Um, so, you know, Lynn started this in 1996. It's not even 2020. It seems like a very long time, but it's a very short time to transition um, and create centers like this that can be modeled and other people can start to yeah. copy it. Um, it's hard to copy. Um, we can try to help. Um, you know, I'm curious, you've said a lot of things, but does anything come to mind specifically? Um, what, what do you want to give to 
these underserved communities that you've been given from yoga? That I've been given from yoga? Um, you know, like, what do you want to pay for? I think, um, I think it's the power of um, not only a community, but visual, visualization, imagination. Yeah. Um, it's not about positive thinking, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. It's about imagining and realizing and belief and and believing. Sometimes I'm like, eh, even if you don't believe it, just do it, <laughs> experience <laughs> it. Um, because I don't know if I ever would have believed in yoga before I did it. Yeah. You know, it, what I didn't sure. believe in it. And I think throughout the stages of my life, it's become increasingly different. Um, it definitely was the tool that I got through my, my brothers, the loss of my brother. And I think that um, what I'd want to give to the girls is the power to, um, you know, regulate their emotions, mm-hmm. um, feel feel their their ego and their balance, um, feel their emotional side and their rational side and allow them the tools to feel empowered and to know how to communicate, know that they have boundaries and know that they have the right to do with them. Um, there's two things you own, in my opinion, on this planet, no matter who you are, and it's your body and your time. Mm-hmm. And I feel if I can translate the best in a way that um, that those two things are the most precious things you own and that you can do anything with them as long as you're precious with them, that everyone's going to be okay. Yeah. Um, and that, quote, the violence, the anger that, that is out there um, doesn't necessarily need to be in your world. Yeah. Um, and you can balance yourself and then take on the violence of the bigger world would be what I'd want to teach um, mm-hmm. or what I'd want to channel through yoga, right. what I've learned. Yeah. Um, I almost just quickly said, oh, I want to give them what I want. Whatever I want, I'm sure they want or whatever. <laughs> and then you um, – but I listened to what you said. And um, yoga is a powerful tool. Yeah. Um, and you can sharpen your tools and the box that you ha- carry around. I think what yoga allows you to do is is drop the ones that perhaps served you at one point. Yeah. Um, that maybe you're habitually just keep using. Absolutely, it like raises it can raise your awareness to where you're carrying extra stuff and give you the power to drop that. So I think that's that's where I would. Um, I would like to share the toolbox. Yeah. And everyone's going to have different tools. But exactly what you said, if it's um but know which ones are being effective for right. you. Yeah. And which which is just habit or what's into it or what's you think you have or what you think you need to quote protect yourself. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. yeah. The power to uh create your own toolbox. Do you sometimes um uh, reflect on um, sort of like your life from the girl that didn't fit in at home to like fast forward now when earlier you said I finally found my place and finally sort of found your dharma your mission and you know all the things that you've gone through and you know some of what you share with us but I'm sure there is a lot more I'm and, s- um it, reflection is is huge for me now, and it, it wasn't always necessarily. Um, I never was a great journaler. I never, um, and now I'm I am doing that. <laughs> um, but it's um, I even like before this, I had I kind of looked back on my press, not as a little girl, but on my press, and I'm just like, and the questions were different, but kind of the answers are the same. Yeah, um, the song remains the same. Like uh, the questions Robert were, Plant said. <laughs> <laughs> the questions were all about like, oh, Trisha, what is your American dream? Like, you know, um, 
and it and you know it's and how do you do the American dream and how do you keep it up and and you know the addiction of of being skinny and what's this and what's that and how do you take care of yourself to be the person who people need you to be to come into the studio so you can sneak the well the well being in on them or and the answer has always been compassion and community um, not for it's like a go to answer but like if I would have been able to have the tools as a little girl to have compassion about mm-hmm. myself, I would have created a community then. I'm pretty sure of it. Yeah. Um, so it is the tools that um, of the box that really yeah. help shape and, you know, strengthen your, your own tools while you um, – and you can play with each other, you know, um, so you can see what other resources are out there. But um, – as you sharpen your your tools, play you know like a symphony. Like you, you sharpen your own instrument, and um, their solos are awesome. But there's nothing better than when everyone comes together yeah. and plays. Sharpening, I found that sharpening my own instrument has helped me to tune into others. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Trisha. Um, yeah, this was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm really excited for the future of the LAS Girls Club and the future of your work. Um, as I'm very grateful, deeply grateful for your work up to now. Um, so stay tuned, Alexis, because I think yeah. <laughs> uh, episode season four might have a little bit of um, Alexis and what we're going to do with the well-being. So. Oh, totally. We're going like Sopranos. We're going yeah. season six B. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Six and season B <laughs> in the Lower East Side. Cool. But there's there's more people that I don't know that I do. And I, I feel like I have such an amazing community. So the more um the more people I meet that I don't know, yeah. Really yeah. um breaks open um and it builds a different kind of community. I mean something that excites the shit out of me about you is that you have like figured out how to do something amazing and like replicate it in different cities too <laughs> so it's like even if we get this lower east side we can be like okay let's pick another lower east side like lower east side mexico city lower Ooh, east yeah. side san francisco yeah, you know the there'd be some mad tents. it can only be lower east side oh <laughs> it's all on the it's LA. In the contract yeah exactly. yeah so anyone listening out there um in the lower east <laughs> <laughs> You know how to catch us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, to catch us, just email us at yogisontheroad at gmail.com, yogis.ontheroad mm-hmm. on Instagram, Trisha Donegan on Instagram. And yeah, if you want to come practice with her and yeah, do some sweating and some like cool, uh, you know, yoga stuff. It's, it's, it's going to be hot. It's not going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be hot, cool yoga stuff. Not pretty hot. No, I mean, the Lower East Side, it's always been cool. You know, we brought the hot. <laughs> Yeah, and now so, we're uh, and now we're bringing actually the fierce, <laughs> awesome and grace and uh, yeah, it's actually the logo. I like it. It's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it caught my attention. I didn't see the swan inside the. Um... Yeah, you got to pay attention. Yeah, and that's she and told that's me. um and that's the great thing about I think um, life, <laughs> l- life and and the way that you can go through the process. What one thing means to one person will mean something completely different to another, and like I said, the same thing that meant to me when I was just four years ago is something different than now. Yeah. Um, I do believe things and people can change. Yeah. I sometimes yeah. think about that. Like my eyes change and the world seems to be changing. But well, you know when your eyes change. <laughs> <laughs> we all know when eyes change. <laughs> um, and also if you want to if you want to donate to the Lower East Side Girls Club, we'll put the, that link up in our bio as well. And um you know where to find us also if you just if you have any questions on how you want to support because I think ultimately that's really what we would like out of this that would be the true practice of yoga in my opinion so thank you so much for listening and yeah. you know share this with anybody that you think might uh, be on the fence about doing some yoga <laughs> yeah thanks guys thanks for spending you know your time today it's pretty awesome afternoon <laughs> yeah. it was awesome thank you cool. yeah, thank thanks you.